So far in the course, we have taken look at various aspects of the so-called digital design. We looked at number systems, we looked at different kinds of logic functions and operations. We saw Boolean algebra. We saw how to do arithmetic using the binary system, which is the foundation for digital design. And we also saw what are the devices through which we can realize logic functions. In fact, the last two or three lectures were focused entirely upon that. Now, having acquired this basic knowledge, it is now time for us to slowly take a step forward and sort of try to see where does digital logic play a role as far as our life is concerned. That is to say, apart from those initial discussions that we had about logic being the way in which we think and take decisions. Apart from that, using the knowledge that we have gained so far, what are some immediate places where we can use the knowledge that we have learned so far? So today, let us take a look at one such application and that is nothing but the codes in digital systems. Now when you hear the word code, when you hear the word code, several things may come into your mind. Codes could mean something like related to secrecy. To those of you who are enthusiasts in software, code could mean writing a program, so on and so forth. But in all of these, whatever comes into your mind, it is important to know that code, the word code still has the same meaning in whatever sense you think about it. So a code is nothing but a means of representing information. Code is a means of representing information. And in many cases, especially where you want to maintain secrecy or ensure that the information that you are trying to represent is meant for particular people or particular use. That is like saying, if I am representing some information in the form of a code, either I don't want people to understand that code or it is like saying I don't want to bother people by asking them to understand this code. Rather, the moment I am representing some information in some code, they will, I mean it will essentially be an indication to the peop people or the person who can indeed understand that code. So some cases it is secrecy, some cases it is protection of information, some cases it is merely avoiding inconvenience. So in some sense code, along with it being a means of representing the information and we can also add that the code is something that is known to the sender and receiver. So one of the most common applications where you might hear this word code is for example in a hospital. In a hospital if let us say an emergency procedure is going on and suddenly they say you know code yellow for example, 
it may mean that code yellow indicates that there is a dangerous chemical which has spilled and immediately that has to be cleared out it could be a hazard for people so therefore if on the on the speaker the person shouts you know code yellow code yellow the people who are in the emergency staff they will immediately know what it is the general public who are in the hospital may not know so because in this case you will see if the emergency if this emergency piece of information is known to the public let us say that code yellow means this it might cause a panic it might cause a panic in the hospital and people will run here and there then it will be difficult to manage things and the situation may go out of control so rather than doing that rather than doing that if you announce code yellow to only those people who i i mean who can understand that code yellow meaning then they will immediately rush forward and take care of the situation this is one place where you can use a code in a way that will not inconvenience other people so much of the uh, hospital work can still you know continue as if nothing happened now there is as i said you can also use code as a means of secrecy okay so let us say let's take a more uh, better example uh where we can understand this concept of secrecy so now now let us say that i am standing somewhere that is let us say i am standing over here this is me and here i have a friend let's call him friend 1 and nearby i have another friend who is standing now let us say this friend 1 comes to me and asks me that hey i i need to borrow some money i mean i'm in some trouble i need to borrow some money now suppose let us say you, you want to tell him you want to tell friend 1 that yeah, i i i genuinely want to help you and then i want to tell how much money i can give you but the problem is friend 2 is standing nearby and i know that this friend 2 is a bit of a pain because he has a history of borrowing money and not returning so therefore at the same time i i i mean i don't want my friend to to know how much money i have but i also want to help out friend one by telling him how much money i can give now let us say i am willing to give rupees 500 to friend one because he needs it immediately but if i tell him acha baba i can give you 500 rupees then friend two will immediately uh, try to exploit that so which i don't want but now suppose i know that i know what is binary and i know that my friend one also understands binary but friend two does not understand binary so in that case i will convert this binary uh, rather i will convert this 500 into a binary code i will convert this into a binary code so for example if you want to convert 500 into binary it's very simple so 256 will be there 256 plus 128 is 384 this will also be there 64 will be 448 that's there 448 plus 32 is 480 plus 16 496 now after 496 we just need a 4 so if i write this so if i tell my friend one that okay 111110100 one, 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 
immediately friend one will understand that I'm, I am I mean 500 but friend two will probably not understand this he will think that I am speaking some gibberish I am speaking something very stupid so therefore I am able to convey the information to my friend one without friend two being suspicious so this is one example where we can effectively convert a decimal number into a binary code and this is nothing but a binary code a binary code code can be of any number of bits 1 bit 2 bit 4 bit 8 bit like that it can be any number of bits similarly binary is not the or rather this binary is very powerful but 0 and 1 is not always the uh, uh, way of representing binary codes. For instance, another version of this binary code is also quite popular or rather I should say was quite popular where the zeros and ones are represented using you know yes and no or you know there is a code which was once very popular these days it is not very popular that code is called as a morse code so morse code is where you know you can represent one or zero using let us say a dot or a dash a dot or a dash so this was very popular in the old radio telegraphs where they would just keep pressing some keys press means a dot a no press means a dash something like that so morse codes used to be very popular in the uh, navigation and uh, radio communications for the much of the 20th century the early part of it uh, as far as ships were concerned while talking to each other over the radio Similarly, in case you may have seen the movie Titanic, you, you may have noticed there, there, there's a scene where the Morse code is actually relayed by means of a lamp, a glowing lamp for a specified time period means that it's a dot and the lamp not glowing for a specified period means it's a dash. So they are essentially trying to relay a distress signal by means of a lamp. This is also something that is uh, done or rather it used to be done especially in cases if the radio is not working so morse code was once upon a time very very popular so here we saw our first code that we know and this first code is what is called as the simple binary code which can be of n number of bits and simple binary code is nothing but representing a number in its binary form. Let us now look at the second code that we can come across and that is called as binary coded decimal. also called as BCD. This is the short form, BCD. Now, now, binary coded decimal looks like binary, but it is not binary. Here, you must know that BCD is a code which is taken from both decimal numbers as well as binary numbers and you can represent only a decimal number in its binary code or BCD code. Now suppose I have the decimal number 256. I have this in decimal. Now the rule is if you want to convert this decimal number into a BCD code then the first thing that you do is take each of the digits each of the decimal digits independently 2, 5 and 6 and and represent each 
of these individual digits in its 4 bit binary form. So for 6, the 4 bit binary code would be 0, 1, 1, 0. 5 would be 0, 1, 0, 1. You can convert this very easily. And 2 is 0, 0, 1, 0. So therefore, the BCD code would be if you concatenate all of these together. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, then 0, 1, 1, 0. This is the final BCD form. Please note that this is not exactly binary or rather this is not a true binary code because 256 in binary is definitely not this. So here we use, we saw how to convert a decimal number into a binary coded decimal where we took each, each decimal digit independently and we converted them into its 4-bit binary equivalent. So here needless to say, the maximum, the largest single digit that you can represent would be 9. So say for example, if you want to represent the largest 2-digit number, so 99 in BCD, would be what? 1001101 zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. because each of this is 9. But this same 99 in binary is not this. 99 in binary is something that is totally different. So that will be 64 plus 32, 96, 16, 8, 4, This is 99 in binary. This is BCD, this is binary. So, notice that the two are not the same. Notice that the two are not the same. So, now you may question. You may definitely question, what is the use of BCD when we already have binary? What is the use of BCD when we have binary? Well, definitely, BCD seems to provide one more way through which it looks like binary but it is, it is actually not. So therefore if you are in a room full of people who understand binary and yet you want to convey some information secretively you can use BCD. But jokes apart BCD has a lot more use than just disguising binary and let me now tell you what is the use of BCD. So one of the biggest reasons why the BCD exists is because of display digits. It is there because of display digits. Now what do I mean by a display digit? Whether you are using a calculator or you are standing at a railway station or at a bank cash counter, you would have seen something called as a 7 segment display. Where each digit can be shown using 8 LED segments. So it looks like this, say for example the digit 8. There are seven number of segments. So each segment that is a straight line indicates an LED. LED as you know is a light emitting diode. So if I have to show the digit 8 then all of these seven segments will glow. 
So these seven segments have a number. They are called A to G. So for the digit 8, all of these segments A to G will be on. For 6, B will be off. It will look like this. Let us say for 4, you will have F, B, G and C. So what happens is that using each of this set of segments, you can represent digits from 0 to 9. So let us say each set that is from A to G, you can represent one decimal digit that is from 0 to 9. Now what if you want to show multiple digits in decimal? Suppose you are waiting at a railway station and you are checking what time the train is expected to arrive. Suppose you see that you look up in the platform and you see that there is a display unit which is showing that okay this train on this platform will arrive at so and so time. Let us say the time that it is supposed to arrive is 12 37. So in that case what you will need? You will need to show four different decimal digits. So therefore you will need four sets of seven segments. So the one will look like this, two will look like this, three will look like this and seven will look like this. So effectively what you will need is four sets of seven segments. four sets of seven segment displays. So therefore, what it will now be, you can actually see the time on the board like this. But still, where does BCD come in? BCD comes in in the sense that inside this board, there exists a circuit. There exists a circuit which can actually convert a four bit binary number into a decimal number. So therefore, if I want to show for 1, I will give 0, 0, 0, 1. If I want to show for 2, I will give 0, 0, 1, 0. If I want to show for 7, I will give 0, 1, 1, 1. So each of those digits for the time are entered in the form of BCD numbers. not as a binary number. Similarly for 3, I did not show it. It is 0, 0, 0, sorry, 0, 0, 1, 1. So each of the digits are entered in the form of a BCD because you can then control each of them independently. That is one advantage. Say for example, if there is something wrong or some there is a uh, bug in one of the digits, the others will not be affected. Compare this with the binary. If there was a bug in any one of the digits, there is a very good likelihood that the whole display would have malfunctioned. So that is one more advantage the BCD provides. So one of the biggest advantages of the BCD is that it is used in a seven segment display. You must have seen this as I mentioned in railway stations. You must have seen them in the bank counter. Let us say when you want to withdraw cash from the bank window, not from the ATM, then normally the cashier gives you a token. Rather, the, the bank counter gives you a token. You have to wait until your token number is displayed or called out. So normally in many banks, they use a, a seven segment display to show which counter, they, which, which token number 
they want to call. There are also seven segments are used. You can see seven segments in some hospitals. Calculator. Calculator digits. So even there, seven segments are used. Not in all calculators, but in many of them. Especially the ones, the calculators which are used by many shopkeepers, which is a, which is a very simple calculator, not a scientific one. But you will see that each numeric digit will be repre represented using seven segments. So this is where BCD finds a lot of use. Let us now look at the next code. Let us now look at the next code. The third code is something called as the gray code. Now the gray code is also kind of binary code. But the speciality of the gray code is that it is a sort of binary representation where successive numbers or rather the codes, the gray codes of successive numbers differ by one bit position. they differ by one bit position. Now, what does that mean? Let, before going into gray code, let us understand the binary code. Let us understand the binary code. So, let's say, I have a number and binary code. I write it as 4 bit. So if I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on, the binary code of 0 will be 0000. zero, zero, zero. 1 is 0001. Zero, zero, one. So when you compare 0 and 1, what you see is only the LSB is different. So therefore, here there is a 1 bit difference. Now when you look at 2, now you compare 1 and 2. You are seeing the LSB is also changing, the next bit is also changing. So between 1 and 2, there is a 2 bit position difference. 3. You again see that only the LSB is changing. The others are the same. So over here, over here, again there is a 1 bit position difference. There is a 1 bit position difference. For 4, you have 0, 1, 0, 0. The LSB is changing, the next bit is changing and even the bit after that is changing. So here you have a 3 bit position difference. So here what you see in the simple binary code, the difference between successive numbers or the difference between the codes of successive numbers may be any number of bits. But the gray code is not like that. Gray code will be in such a way that the codes for each of these numbers successively will differ by only one bit position. Now let us see how to convert binary code into gray code. Now let us say I have a 4 bit binary code B3, B2, B1, B0 where these indicate the binary digits. Now I want to convert these into gray codes. That is G3, G2, G1, G0. 
Rule number one for the gray code is that number of bits in binary will be equal to the number of bits in gray. Now, suppose I want to convert this binary 4-bit number into a 4-bit gray code. Let us see how we can do this. I have this number b3, b2, b1, b0. First things first, the MSB does not change. So g3 will be equal to b3. But g2, that is the next bit for the gray code, will be the XOR of b3 and b2. b3 XOR b2. Or b2 XOR b3, whichever one you want to write. g1 will be the XOR of b1 and b2. And G0 will be the XOR of B0 and B1. So therefore, let us very quickly see what will be the gray codes for some of our numbers. So if it is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, like this. So in binary, 0, 0, 0, 0. So in gray, you can apply this and you will see this is also 0000. zero, zero, zero. Now, binary it is 0001. Zero, zero, so let's try to convert this. MSB stays as it is. 0 XOR 0 is 0. 0 XOR 0 is again 0. And 0 XOR 1 is 1. So even this does not change. 2. 2 is 0010. Zero, zero, MSB remains same as 0. The next bit is 0 XOR 0 which is 0, then 1 XOR 0 is 1 and then 0 XOR 1 is 1. So notice that the gray code of 2 is not the same as binary, it is different. Now let us write 3 in binary. So the gray will be MSB is 0, next bit will also be 0, next bit will be 0 XOR 1 which is 1, next bit is 1 XOR 1 which is 0. Again notice that these two are different. 4 is 0 1 0 0. 0 1 0 0. So over here the MSP will be 0. The MSP will be 0. The next bit will be 1 XOR 0 which is 1. Then will be 0 XOR 1 which is a 1 and then 0 XOR 0 which is 0. So likewise you can do for the rest of it also. But what you are seeing now is that for any two successive numbers there is only one bit position. Here only the LSB is different. Between these two only the last but one bit changes between these two again the LSB changes and between these two this bit changes. So you will be able to see that you can actually use this and see that for all the successive numbers the neighboring numbers will differ by one bit position. So here the XOR operation is quite popular. The XOR operation is quite popular and it is that operation which is used in the gray code. Right. So now you may ask, you may ask what is the big deal about gray code apart from the fact that it changes in one bit position. I will not answer this question now. I will not answer this question now, but very soon we are going to be re revisiting the gray code 
and then you will understand what is the power of the grey code. Let us look at the next code. Code number 4 which is called as the XS3 code. Now XS3 is very similar to BCD. XS3 is very similar to BCD. So where if you want to convert a decimal number into XS3, step 1 is to convert into BCD. And step 2 is add 3 to each BCD digit. Suppose we have this decimal number 328. So write them independently. So the BCD form is when you write the 4 bit equivalent of each. This is BCD. But for XS3, you will have to add 3 to each of these. So what you will get over here is 1011. Here you will get and here you will get this. So the XS3 is this. So the XS3 form for the number 328 in decimal is this. So the XS3 you can write it in this way. Again you can co combine all of them. This is the whole XS3 representation. One second. What is the use of doing this? What is the use of doing this? Let's take a simple answer. Let's take a simple example and see what is the use of this. I have the XS3 code of 328. What I will now do is I will take the once complement of this code. So the once complement will be nothing but replace once with zeros and zeros with ones. So this is the once complement of this number. Now convert this. Now what you do? You subtract 3 from each of these. So you can make groups of 4. You can convert them into decimal. This is 4. This is 10. This is 9. So again you can subtract 3 from each of these. If you do this, you will see that what you get is 1, 7 and 6. So effectively I am converting it back into a kind of decimal form. And I am undoing the XS3 operation. Now what is the relationship between 328 and 671? 671 is the ninth complement of 328. So if I take the ninth complement of 328, you will get 1, 7, 6. Same as this one. So what I am seeing over here? Once complement in XS3 is equal to ninth complement in decimal. Once complement in XS3 is ninth complement in decimal. So that is why XS3 is called as a self-complementing code. XS3 is called as a self-complementing code because whether you take the ninth complement in decimal or the ones complement in XS3, it is essentially the same operation. Right? Let us now take a look at the next code. Let us take a look at the next code. That is, the next code 
is what is called as a 2421 code also called as the icon code icon code so this is a very interesting operation where you can again see that it is a 4 bit code where you can represent numbers from 0 to 9 in a 4 bit combination it is a little, little different from binary because in binary in 4 bit binary the powers of 2 are written this way 8421 but the msb is written using 2 not 8 so if i have let us say 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 i want to represent them in xs3 or 2421 code uh, no, sorry 2421 is not xs3 2421 is the icon code so what you will notice is there are 10 digits so first thing is you divide them in half the first five digits over here and the last five digits over here you will see that for the first five you can write it in the normal binary fashion now for five if you want to write five simply take the ones complement of four what you see this is the power of two two plus two plus one that is five so effectively this is now one's complement of four now what you do you take one's complement of three for six that is one one zero zero again you notice it is two plus four seven seven will be the one's complement of two that is two plus four plus one eight will be two plus four plus two which is the one's complement of one and last nine will be one 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 so effectively what you are seeing is that it, it is a mirror image once complement so again what you are noticing over here is that these are all ones complements of each other but in the decimal form these are all nine complements of each other so event 2421 is another self complementing code Two four two one is also a self complementing code so in this particular lecture we saw the different kinds of codes one can use using binary as a basis of it and there exists multiple such codes we shall continue from this point onwards in the next lecture thank you